Hello, my name is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the first part of photosynthesis, which is the process green plants use to build carbohydrate with sunlight energy. Plants are called producers in our biosphere because they produce food energy, and food energy is just a form of chemical energy that's easy to store. And because plants use the food energy for their own metabolism that they produce themselves, we're calling them autotrophs, which means to feed yourself with molecules that you built yourself. To understand photosynthesis, we have to start with the chemistry here. And this is the, the balanced photosynthetic reaction that I know you guys have been seeing since middle school. Carbon dioxide plus water molecules is going to produce glucose plus some oxygen, which escapes into the atmosphere. So we have to figure out where the oxygen is coming from, because that's, that's the, the heart and soul here of photosynthesis. We know we're building glucose, but where is this oxygen coming from? Is it coming from the water molecule or the carbon dioxide molecules over here on the reactant side? This was the question that faced biochemists at the turn of the century. So we have two hypotheses here. So let's start by breaking this reaction down a little bit by simplifying it. So we're going to divide all these molecules by six to give us a simpler reaction to work with. One carbon dioxide plus one water molecule is going to give us a CH2O molecule and oxygen gas. Now this is a simple subunit of all carbohydrates. One carbon, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. That has all the proportionality of carbohydrate subunits. And if you take six of these and combine them, you can build a sugar like C6H12O6. So this makes it a little simpler to follow what we're going to do next. So how is photosynthesis done to produce these mini carbohydrates? Well, the first hypothesis was that photosynthesis is going to take apart or split carbon dioxide and add the, prop, the carbon to water. So let me show you what we're talking about here. We're going to split the carbon dioxide molecule into oxygen and carbon, and then we're going to add that carbon to some water to build that basic uh, carbohydrate molecule. And we're going to use that O2 that's left over, which is what gets released into the atmosphere. And if you take six of those um, carbohydrates, you can build a simple carbohydrate, like simple sugar, like glucose. Okay, so that's our first hypothesis. The second hypothesis is that you're going to split the water molecule to get the oxygens away and the hydrogens away from each other. So we're going to break H2O into an oxygen atom and two hydrogens. And then we're going to add those two hydrogens to carbon dioxide to give us our carbohydrate molecule plus some water to make it all balance out. And that oxygen is where the oxygen is coming from that's released into the atmosphere. So this was proven to be the correct answer. Um, hypothesis 2 was the right answer. And I'll, you guys need to understand how this was done. A scientist named Van Neel at Stanford University noticed that some bacteria in some ecosystems are able to make carbohydrate without releasing oxygen. These are anaerobic bacteria. And these bacteria thrive on a poisonous gas called hydrogen sulfide, or H2S. So what the, he found out that these bacteria were doing is they're taking H2S and they're breaking it up into sulfur and hydrogen and they're taking that hydrogen and adding it to a carbon source, carbon dioxide, to produce their carbohydrate. So they're being producers without using water and without releasing oxygen. Instead, they release elemental or yellow crystal sulfur into their environment. So Van Niels hypothesized that if these photosynthetic organisms were able to do it with hydrogen sulfide, why couldn't regular plants or plants do this with water? Okay, so in fact he figured out that carbohydrates are actually made by adding hydrogens to carbon dioxide. They're not made by adding carbons to water as was previously believed. So was he right? Yes, he was right. Um, as is true for all scientific ideas, they have to be verified, and we've since confirmed that Van Niels was right. Because if you take radioactively labeled oxygens and you trace or track where they go, if you radioactively label the oxygens in carbon dioxide, they always end up in the glucose molecule. And if you label the oxygens in the water, they always end up in the oxygen that's released out into the atmosphere. So scientists today have confirmed that Van, Niels was, Van Niel was right on. He proved that plants split water to get the hydrogens, and then they add those hydrogens to carbon dioxide to make carbohydrate. So this proves that plants split water. Okay, photosynthesis is actually an uh, oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction. And we know this because, if you guys remember from our chapter on respiration, if you are 
taking, ox taking hydrogens or the electrons that hold hydrogens to molecules away from something, you are, you are oxidizing it. So if you see in this reaction, water is being oxidized. It's losing electrons. So here we have H2O being converted to atmospheric or O2 diatomic oxygen. So it's lost hydrogens and the accompanying electrons. So we're saying that water is being oxidized. Now, that's like saying water is being burned. How in the world can you burn water? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, the carbon dioxide is being reduced. We're taking carbon dioxide and we're adding those electrons to it to build glucose. So you can see we have water being oxidized and carbon dioxide being reduced. So oxidizing water, that doesn't seem to make sense. Water doesn't burn, it puts out fires. So what that means is water isn't going to oxidize all by itself. Water is going to have to be energized in a very critical way in order to give up those electrons. Remember oxygen is a very electronegative atom. It's way over to the right side of the periodic table and it's going to take energy to break these covalent bonds here. So this energy is going to come from sunlight. So if we put pressure or put stress on a water molecule using the energy from sunlight in just the right way, we can break that covalent bond and release those electrons. And those electrons are what are key to building carbohydrate. All right, to get a little further, we're going to have to talk a little bit about the physics of light, and I'm going to save that for our next video cast.